Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be talking about Talk, progressive rock group Yes's 14th studio album. Previously, I have done a video about Yes uh, in my Yes album tier list video, uh, which you should check out. Um, and when going through it, I got to Talk, but really skimmed over it as some comments pointed out, saying that they would like me to revisit it, and that's exactly what I'll be doing today. I'm going to try my best not to let my previous biases of not really liking this album very much into this analysis. Uh, I really gave it a shot, uh, and I was really, really hoping to come out liking it, and I guess you'll see if I did in the end. Um, I figure I should give you some background on this album specifically before we get started on the analysis, because I think it's important to know where the band is, uh, I guess, mentally and like musically, uh, to really get an idea of, uh, of what the album is. So this album came out in 1994. Uh, in between Union and Keys to Ascension 1, uh, which is important because Union was really where the band came back. Throughout the 80s, they were having problems of people leaving and making their own groups and blah, 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 blah. But Union is where they finally came back. Union was kind of a stinker, but that's besides the point. They came back. <laughs> All the main credits to these songs on this album go to Trevor Rabin. Um, the lineup being John Anderson, Chris Squire, Trevor Rabin, Alan White, and Tony Kay. Um, which is interesting because Tony Kay was one of the founding members, but he wasn't around for a little bit. And now he's back. This is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Raven was mostly credited with a couple things in between, which I'll, I will touch on, um, but mostly to Raven, which is kind of interesting. Uh, when doing this analysis, I'll just be going over each of the songs individually and then kind of talk about the album as a whole in the end. Uh, starting with The Calling. Um, I really thought that the harmonies on this track were amazing. It was really, the whole thing was kind of crisp. Um, that is something that I will be mentioning a lot throughout this entire video is that the the harmonies and the vocals in general is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, they really hit their stride with their vocals in, in, in this album. Um, the breakdowns on The Calling, um, I wish they had a little more. This is where you can really see um, that the band is lacking without Steve Howe. Steve Howe is really a, a pivotal part to be able to bring um, the breakdowns together to have those guitar solos and have the, the supplementary lines that he brings to Squire and stuff. Without that, it kind of was lacking, but still, I think the track was pretty good. Uh, I didn't hate it, um, which, uh, going into this being the first one, I was like, oh god, I'm going to hate this all over again. But I didn't. I actually really enjoyed that track. It's a good one. Um, I would listen to it pretty often. I do like it. Uh, I Am Waiting is next. Um, immediately, I got classic 90s power ballad vibes, like, immediately hit. Uh, there's a great guitar solo in the beginning, uh, and just in general, the guitar is great on that song. Um, then it switches it up to a really, really chill beat, back to power ballad, down to chill beat, um, which was fine. It wasn't my favorite thing in the entire world. Musically, I thought it was good. Um, I, the song was a bit lacking for me. I think that it was just kind of like repetitive the way that it went from like ballad to slow to ballad to slow. It was like, it's okay. I don't think I'll be listening to it again anytime soon, but it wasn't terrible. It was not terrible real love this is where we find it find something interesting the music was entirely done by chris squire with the lyrics um i forget who did the lyrics um but the music was done by chris squire the beginning to me felt like a factory theme in a video game uh, i don't know if that means much but to me i am pictured like final fantasy 7 uh and the main characters walking down this dark and like dank warehouse kind of thing which was kind of cool um that, that is not a diss in the song at all it was very heavy very hard really really hitting beat which i really liked i love the motifs though i found it a bit repetitive uh i did find it like it was good i think it was a great track but um there was no variation. Yes, um, and very long progressive songs. But the thing I like about stuff uh, earlier in like Relayer is that when they are long, it kind of free flows into an A, B, C section. The D section, the final, the final end bit really wraps it all back together. For this, it was just kind of like A, B, A, B, A, B, going back and forth between those two, uh, which wasn't the worst in the world, um, but it's not something that kind of drew me in and kept me in for a bit. But Real Love, great track. Did I mention it was called Real Love? This is Real Love that I'm talking about. <laughs> Moving on to State of Play. I immediately liked this track. There was something about it. The vocals, the bass being prominent, and it really grooving. Guitars ripping. I, I like just the, the solos, the, the everything. It was great. It was by far, um, I think, my favorite track on the album. Um, at least so far out of the ones I've mentioned. Uh, it was, it's really good. I put that, uh, I was going to put it in a playlist, but sadly... Talk is not on Spotify, uh, which is where I listen to a lot of my music, unless I'm using my record player uh, in my room. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, State of Play, amazing, amazing track. Uh, and you know what kind of brought my opinion on this album to a new light, kind of gave me a little bit of hope for the future. Uh, and then Walls came along, which it was just okay. It was fine. I I thought that the, the harmonies and the vocals, again, were really, really good. Uh, I'm not a fan of very tinny sounding 90s drum kits. Um, it didn't detract from this album at all. I thought they were fine. Uh, it worked, but wasn't my favorite. This song in particular, Walls, was co-written by uh, who I have it written down in my notes, Roger Hodson, lead singer of Super Tramp, which was interesting, very uh, poppier song. I think this is one of the singles they released from this album. It was good. It was fine. Chorus was good. Vocals were good. It was fine. I, there's not not much more to say about it. Where will you be? Was very very interesting. This was a very tranquil, very low key grooving track. It was it was really good. The uh, opening synth riffs reminded me of something out of uh, the N64 Zelda games, like uh, in Ocarina of Time and stuff. Um, though the album predated that game by uh, I don't know two or three years, four years. So. They did it first, <laughs> but I thought it was good. It, it really grooves. It's not really in your face, uh, and it just kind of just kind of went along, and it was it was kind of peaceful. I liked it. I would listen to it again, um, but it wasn't stand out, which isn't good or bad. Uh, and ending it off with "Endless Dream," I thought this song in general was fantastic. Uh, it uh, was described in the different things that I have listened to and and watched as like up there with like "Awaken," "Gates of Delirium," "Close to the Edge." Personally, I don't think so, but it was still a really good track. There's a killer intro section. There's um, one of the, the second section after the intro. There are these affected vocals, which I think is Trevor Rabin singing. And really, there's just like hard, rocking, booming sections with the drums. Uh, amazing vocals from John Anderson in total. Uh, the, the piece really rocks. Uh, it's, it's really great. I really, really liked it. But it's not on the level of like gates of delirium or something gates is one of my favorite pieces of all time from yes uh and people comparing it to that i would not agree that that it's on that level but i still think it was a, it was a really good long form song it felt the it fit the the bill for one of those kind of yes songs but improved on their technology and their their style in a different way uh, i think without Steve Howe and Trevor Rabin instead on those long form songs, it brought something different, which I saw, I thought was good. Um, but again, not, not my favorite of all time. So in total, this, this album, which I'm glad I gave it a second chance was good. It was a, it's a good album. I like it about as much as 90125. Um, and maybe a little bit less than, uh, the latter. I really like the latter a lot. Um, and I think, this I can see as a good stepping stone to get to the ladder. So I appreciate this album now and what it did. My opinion did change. I do like this album. I like it. It's not something I would listen to often. Uh, I wouldn't uh, do it again. I wouldn't do what I did again today and just listen through the, the whole album all over again uh, anytime soon. But I might go back and listen to a track or two. So that's really all I can ask for an album is get those one or two tracks that I will go back and listen to. So... I'd put it, um, if I put it up on screen, hopefully, maybe, um, I'd put it, like, right in the middle of, of the tier list. If not, go back and check it out. I put it, I'll put it right above 90125. So, yeah, good album. Glad I checked it out again. So, thank you guys for the suggestion. If you guys have any other suggestions of albums you want me to go more in-depth on like this, please do let me know. Um, and please subscribe for more like this. So, I'll see you next time, uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.